Welcome back everyone to another edition of Faith and Sports. I am so excited to talk with my guest today, a former Auburn standout, actually a two-sport athlete, then went on to have a seven-year career in the big leagues, did some television analyst work, and now serves as an assistant coach for the Auburn baseball team, Gabe Gross. Gabe, I certainly appreciate you taking some time away from that jet ski of yours to chat with me today. Uh, absolutely. I, I, my daughter's waiting on me right now. So we, we get this through. We're going to uh, go out on the lake. That's the a, that's a safest place. You're not around anybody. Exactly. There. Good to go on a jet ski. Look, I am quite envious. I'll tell you that much. That is how you quarantine. But like I said, Gabe, really your entire life has involved sports. Even once your playing days were over, you never really got away from the game. And I know that you're a very faith-driven man. So how have you seen or experienced the connection between faith and sports? Well, to me, I, you know, for so much of my life, I had two great passions, and that was my faith in sports and uh, getting married and having kids and having a family. I now have three great passions uh, in life. And uh, really the, the first two sports and faith, it, it's hard for me to separate them. Um, it really is. It's just um, my life has been uh, really lived on a field uh, through high school. I played uh, three sports, played football, basketball, baseball. Um, and then in college football, baseball, then just, just baseball. And then I was on TV talking about it and now I'm on the field <laughs> coaching it. And so, you know, I, it, it's it's hard to separate simply because it's, it sports has been what I've done, and and my faith has guided me uh, throughout my life. Uh, my my life verses Proverbs three five and six, or I should say verses. Um, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. And I I can't tell you how many times throughout my sports career as a player, uh, analyst, and as a coach that I've I've just fallen back on that verse. It's just like when. When all else fails, I go check back in with that verse and make sure that I'm honoring him and what I'm doing. And that usually helps me help to make big decisions and, and, and helps me act the way that I know I'm supposed to act to represent him. It's such an excellent verse. And interestingly enough, uh, another Auburn great, Jason Campbell, when he did this interview, that was the verse that he said he often referred to during his time in sports. So that's pretty cool. But it's, it's such a, a testament to what, well, we all need to focus on, but certainly athletes, you know, because there can be deviation of what plan you're expecting for yourself, e even so much so as a game not going the way you anticipate, or maybe you get injured and things have to redirect. So I think that verse really resonates with so many athletes. So when you look back over the course of your career, was there a, a moment or a situation that you felt like your faith was really put to the test? You know, it, it, it almost every day. <laughs> you know, the uh, uh, no, but the, I, I would say there's there's two big times in my life. One was when I was at Auburn uh, as as a young man, as a student athlete, and it was wasn't really in sports so much as it was really in the classroom of of people challenging my faith and everybody I grew up with, and whether or not they were uh, devout in their faith or not, they you know knew what church was, went to church, and uh, you know didn't mind talking about God and and would say a blessing with you and you run into people for when you get to a university that don't believe like you and, and will start challenging those beliefs and even professors who will do that. And it really challenged me to, to really find out what I believed. Was it just something that I believed because my parents had brought me up in church, right. just something I believed because that's what everybody around me, or was there something more? Uh, was there something factual? Was it, was it really a foundation to uh, Jesus being who he said he was, the Bible being a reliable source that I could take information and it, and it really, instead of making me question it, it drove me to find those answers. And the more I studied it, the more truth and the more, um, the more deep my faith, uh, became. And then secondly, really, I'd be honest with you, I, I played, uh, seven years in the major leagues. Um, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, to be honest with you though, I, I never was the player that I feel like that I could have been ever. And I feel like I could have been a lot better, could have had better years and so much of that frustration, my faith in uh, my God helped me to really understand that, number one, my life was more than a box score. It was more than a batting average. It was more than a career. Um, and that really there are, are much, much greater things. And, and that didn't cause me to work less hard or to want it any less, but it did help me to understand 
understand that, that again, that, that, you know, my life is wrapped up in my identity as a child of God. That's amazing. And I think that's, that's a realization that athletes come to in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's through the struggles, sometimes it through, it's through the successes, but you've got to get to that point when you're pursuing a career in sports, because it can become all consuming. It can become your identity. And if that's where you are, you're taking the joy out of the game as well. So I think that's, that's an incredible testament. And honestly, something that as a coach, you have to have a really solid foundation in. So I think that's, that's a unique transition for you to now be in that role. And look, we all know coaching goes beyond teaching the game. You're, you're a mentor for these young men. How are you seeing this generation of athletes continue to lean on their relationship with God? You know, it's, it's, it's eerily, uh, some things will never change. Um, when, when pressure gets highest, when, when life comes crashing down, Bible tells us God is close to those, uh, with a broken heart. Um, you know, it, it, it's going to the game of baseball and really sports in general, at some point it's going to humble you. Yeah. Uh, they'll tell our guys and I tell other people as well, if you hadn't been humbled by the game of baseball, you hadn't played it long enough. Just, just keep going. And, <laughs> That's and good. It, it's going to humble you at some <laughs> point. It's gonna get you. And, and you know what, you're going to start, you're going to start asking for answers e even if you know even if you're the greatest that ever played i mm -hmm. can promise you you're going to get to the point where like really this is it yeah. you know this this is it and when you get to that point um you're going to look around you and, and you're going to look to people and uh find people who seem fulfilled with much much less uh, than than you've accomplished and wonder why and that i don't think will ever change um the the pressures of the game on the other side maybe uh, you, you're not doing as well and you're searching and scrambling for answers and, and especially when you're looking at maybe the game coming away from you whether that's you know as you leave out of college maybe you play a season or two in professional baseball and then it's over maybe you don't get drafted and you realize something that you have poured your whole life into right. um, about to be over and if your identity is as a baseball player that's who you are and that's who you're wrapped up in man that foundation is going away bible talks about uh, build your foundation on the rock and if you're foundation is built on being an athlete that's sand and that's going to go away when the storms hit and at some point I don't care how good you are that career will come to an end you, you better have something underneath you and I think that's something that's universal through the ages and, and is the same for today's players I couldn't agree with you more and I think that it's it's such a blessing for so many coaches like yourself and and even former athletes I know you told me the Auburn baseball team has had the pleasure of of getting spoken to by so many former greats and and just to have that wisdom passed down is incredibly beneficial for these young guys uh well my last one for you Gabe since you are preaching the good stuff right now if uh if there are any young athletes out there listening and and kind of struggling with that very thing their identity solely being in their sport and that's the reality is not going to fulfill you. So what advice would you give to young athletes to continue to kind of focus toward faith and then the, the rest will come? Yeah, I, I think it, well, you just you just did a great job of summarizing that one. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that, that comes out of Matthew, you know, seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. But, you know, I, I would I would really say that that if you if you feel like in our, our world uh, and to be honest with you, you and I both have been a part of it a little bit uh, because of the broadcasting and everything else. We elevate sports to such a high position and our society says, this is kind of the end all be all. It's just not true. Uh, and you can talk to even those who are not believers that are, that are truly great in their sport. And they'll tell you, they got struggles, they got problems, yeah. they got things that are going on in life. And look, I don't care who this goes out to or who sees it. They ain't nobody loves winning more than I do. <laughs> and and no, I, I just, I, I, I love it. it. I still love it to this day. Uh, I, that's why I'm still coaching. I, I miss, yeah. I miss the competition. I, I miss the team aspect of everybody pulling together for a goal and then achieving that goal. That is yes. awesome. I've devoted my life to it. I'm not, I'm not in any way, shape, form, or fashion saying that this is a bad thing. But yeah. I'm also saying you have to keep it in its place. You, you have to keep it in its place. God made me uh, with the ability to hit the baseball. And, and to throw decently and to compete. And I use that to glorify him. And, and, and some days I didn't keep it in its place. And, and I learned some hard lessons along the way. But at the end of it, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, you know, my steps are ordered 
by my God. And that's why that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is my life verse. And I don't always understand things. and He sees things clearly, and I don't. Yeah. And when I keep that in perspective, that I'm going to work as hard as I can work. I'm going to compete as hard as I compete. I'm going to do every little thing I can to possibly gain an advantage within the rules of the game to win. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to trust in my Lord uh, that I'm his and that what's best for his kingdom is best for me. And I'm going to trust what, what comes out of it. Oh, man, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that that's exactly the mentality that you have to have because, look, a career in sports is no easy task in any capacity. Being on the broadcast side, coaching, athlete, you have to be rooted in something bigger to be able to sustain the ups and downs of that industry. So uh, I think that that is phenomenal advice. I hope anyone listening takes that to heart because Gabe certainly did that well. Gabe, thank you so much for chatting with me. It's always good catching up with you. I won't keep you from that lake anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> Taylor, thank you very much. Thank you not for just asking me, but for doing this series and, and putting uh, guys' thoughts um, about their faith out for young, young men and women to, to see um, and to hear and hopefully learn and grow from. Thank you. Happily. I appreciate it, Gabe. We'll talk soon. Thanks.